Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, that was last night, underscoring the concerns that Trump would prioritize obedience over credentials in a second term. That from a new essay in The Atlantic titled Loyalists, Lapdogs and Cronies. It's part of a special issue of The Atlantic, arguing that a second Trump presidency would alter America dramatically for the worse. In this case, staff writer McKay Coppins argues, quote, the available supply of serious qualified people willing to serve in a Trump administration has dwindled since 2017. Now, Coppins spoke with former Trump White House spokesperson Hogan Gidley, who told him, quote, I think there's going to be a very concerted, calculated effort to ensure that he, the people he puts in his next administration, they don't have to share his worldview exactly, but they have to implement it. Coppins came up with a list of names currently circulating in MAGA world, who would fit that description, like former Trump advisor Stephen Miller, who's being eyed for various positions, including potentially White House chief of staff, former U.S. ambassador to Germany, Rich, Rick Grinnell, for secretary of state, and 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, potentially for United Nations ambassador, even vice president. What about Texas Senator Ted Cruz? He's among several names being floated for attorney general, along with Jeffrey Clark, who, like Trump, faces charges in the Georgia election interference case. McKay Coppins joins us now. Uh, McKay, why I think your piece is so important is what keeps rattling in my head is the Washington adage, personnel is policy, personnel is policy, personnel is policy. And that's what your piece delves into here, why this is so different from January 20th of 2017. Well, when Trump first came into office, his administration was a mix of loyalists like Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller and more mainstream Republican figures. There was this idea in the Republican establishment in 2017 that what the, the Trump administration needed most was adults in the room. And so you saw a lot of people like James Mattis and John Kelly, Rex Tillerson, who were willing to serve uh, in, in the Trump administration <clears throat> out of duty to what happened is a lot of those people uh, suffered pretty humiliating breaks with the Trump administration. They were unceremoniously fired. They were pushed out. They left in frustration or disgrace. And so a lot of those people that, for, that I've talked to say there's no way that they or anyone in their orbits would serve in another Trump administration. Meanwhile, Trump himself feels burned by a lot of those people because they left, you know, and they often didn't do so quietly. They they voiced their criticism of the president. Trump has been very clear that he feels he was thwarted in his first term by what he calls the deep state. And so what I hear from people in Trump's orbit now is that he will prioritize obedience uh, over almost everything else in his appointments. He wants people who will do exactly what he tells them to do without questioning his orders. And that could make for a very different administration uh, this second time around. Can we talk specifically about the position of attorney general? Because that is crucial. Um, you write about it in here and you float some names like Senator Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, Josh Hawley, then, you know, Florida AG, Pam Bondi, and on and on and on. But when you think about how Trump now talks about his, the two attorney generals who served under his in his first term, especially, particularly Bill Barr, it's a real window into who he might put in that incredibly powerful position. Right. He, he feels uh, that both of the men who served as attorney general for him, uh, you know, betrayed him in one way or another. Right. And, and it's interesting because neither neither Bill Barr nor Jeff Sessions were, you know, uh, especially critical of Donald Trump during his administration. In fact, I think a lot of critics would say they were they were fairly sycophantic, right. but they, because they weren't willing to do everything he said. Uh, and because, you know, in the case of Bill Barr, for example, he wasn't willing to go along with uh, Trump's uh, election conspiracy in 2020, uh, he feels that they, they betrayed him. So it, it, that is one position I've been told he will be focused on, especially making sure that whoever has that job is uh, extremely loyal to him. And, and so you, you mentioned some of the names, the senators, Mike Lee. Josh Ali, Ted Cruz, Pam Bondi in Florida. These are people he feels will will do what he says. And that that job is important to him for a couple of reasons. One is he has made it very clear that he wants to use the Justice Department to visit vengeance, basically, on his political enemies. He said that he will prosecute Joe Biden, for example, that he'll go after other uh, people who have come after him. Um, but he, he'll also use the Justice Department to shield himself right. um, from further criminal inquiries. And so to, to, to Trump, that job is maybe more important than any other one. McKay, I think people may not grasp 
And I think this is important. It's been what a lot of the stories, uh, Maggie and John, Jonathan Swan over the time has been doing great work on this. Our team has as well. Um, the formalized operation tied to the campaign or, or roughly adjacent to the campaign on the policy side of things, making sure they enter office yeah. with a very clear kind of roadmap of what's ahead, very different than 2017. Does that exist on the personnel side too? Mm. Yeah, th this is a really important point because we're talking about the high profile posts, right? And th those are those are important. The attorney general, uh, you know, Department of Homeland Security, things like that. But one of the efforts that's taking place is is being run by the Heritage Foundation. Um, the, and the goal there th that they're trying to work on is to ensure that um, the lower level government bureaucrats, people who work as kind of like rank and file lawyers in the Justice Department, for example, budget wonks, administrators, are also uh, essentially political appointees. The idea is for Trump to sign an executive order shortly, shortly after he takes office that would reclassify up to 50,000 federal employees uh, as essentially political appointees, people that the president could fire at will with or without cause. The goal, and Trump and his allies have been very explicit about this, is to renovate the federal government such that, uh, you know, at every level, this is a federal workforce that will that the president can bend to his will. Uh, he feels, again, that in his first term, there weren't enough government workers who were on board with his agenda. And so he's going to make sure that this time around, there are Trump loyalists throughout the federal government. And again, this could make for a very different administration. And I think a, a lot of people are very alarmed by that. McKay Coppins, The Atlantic is out, uh, came out yesterday, an important issue. Uh, we appreciate your time. A programming note, Liz Cheney will be live with Anderson Cooper tonight.